Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Um, this is uh, the building that I work in, and it's named for Neil Armstrong. So there's a high bar <laughs> for us at Purdue. Um, but I think there's a high bar for all of us in, in, in the STEM field, and, uh, and we, we do hope that we live up to it. When I was a kid, I had an interest in space. And uh, my librarian at my, at my elementary school noticed that I was looking at this magazine called Odyssey, which was in the 1980s was, was about science and space exploration. And she recommended my, to my parents, both educators by the way, that I get a subscription to this. And so I got a subscription and I, and I you know, kept up with that interest. And then when I went to college, I had to figure out what I wanted to major in. So I went to the University of Wisconsin, by the way. Um, <laughs> fellow Badger over there, we must look out for each other. Um, so I went to the University of Wisconsin and I majored in mechanical engineering, but somewhere towards the end of my undergraduate career, I said, I'm still too young to grow up. I mean, we're always in the prime of our youth, aren't we, General? Um, <laughs> he said before, we're all young, but, and I agree with him. Um, so I didn't want to grow up, but I also wanted to learn more about this thing that I had been interested in since I was a kid, and this is astrodynamics. I took a class in it my senior year and I thought, well, I need to go and learn more about it. So, Works. There we go. So I went on to the University of Texas at Austin, which is known for its astrodynamics program. And uh, I looked at GPS pseudolites in the Navigation Systems Testing Laboratory. So this was actually my first exposure to NASA at the graduate level. Um, and uh, it was great. I got to be on the Johnson Space Center campus and I got to you know, learn about some application of astrodynamics. I decided that I wasn't quite ready for a PhD at the end of my master's program, and there was this amazing opportunity at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I said, well, I could stay for a PhD or I could work on the Mars rovers. I'll work on the Mars rovers. <laughs> well, I got there, and uh, I was first put on the Mars Global Surveyor and Mars Odyssey, two spacecraft that were in orbit about Mars to begin with. And then, finally, I got put on the Mars rovers, and this was, you know, this has so far been the highlight of my professional and academic life is that I was one of the team that helped navigate from Earth to Mars. We figured out where we were going, or where we were, where we were going, what maneuvers we needed to do to hit that tight entry as we were coming into Mars so that we could hit that sweet spot that gave us all of that beautiful science when we got there. Now, of course, once we hit the atmosphere, my job was done, and then all the really exciting stuff happened, and all, everybody was excited. Um, but, you know, I still think it was, my part was great because how else would we have gotten there, right? Um, after the Mars Exploration Rover was finished, I got to work on the Genesis project. And this was a, a spacecraft that orbited about, or that was at a libration point, or an equilibrium point, about 1% of the distance from Earth to the Sun, and it collected uh, particles from the Sun, little ions, um, or yeah, uh, little, little solar particles. And we could use that, or scientists could use that to figure out the composition of the Sun. And uh, it, was, it was a great project. Um, and what happened is it was going to return back to Earth. This was the first sample return from space since Apollo. And so I returned back to Earth, and I was in the control room as it was coming down, and we saw it kind of wobbling. We thought, well, that's not supposed to happen. There was supposed to be a parachute, and there was supposed to be a helicopter that caught it by the parachute, which was going to be challenging anyway. And, it, and so it crashed. But when they dug it out, they realized that over 90% of the science was able to be recovered. And so what looks like a mission failure it was actually a mission success. And one of the things that General Bolden said when he was at Purdue last week is that never be afraid to fail. And so even though people thought, well, we failed. No, no, no. It was a stunning success. We, we know more about science now. Well, at some point I decided, well, I really want to go back and get my PhD. And so I went back to Purdue, which is the cradle of astronauts. No, I don't want to be presumptuous here, but <laughs> I wanted to go back to Purdue. And or I wanted to go to Purdue because they have a good program of what I'm interested in. And I got involved through uh, the student ambassador program through um, the first uh, time that NASA sent students to, the, to an international astronautical conference in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, and I missed last year's, but I'm going again this year. Um, and um, I've also been involved in, in some of the student ambassador activities now. But what I really want to talk to you about is what I want. I want a job, sir. <laughs> I think we all do, but NASA and industry, they need talent. They need us to be skilled and talented. So how do we train the next generation? This is a question that you're all going to address and you're all going to answer this week. But you need skilled workers for NASA, contractors, private industry, and you also need those of us 
uh, or you need some of us to actually come up with new ideas and create new businesses, create new economies, new markets. So you can push us into STEM, and you should. You should push us in through math and science em emphasis in K through 12, and you need to give us tuition incentives once we come to college. Make it attractive for us to join and do engineering. Give us scholarships, give us fellowships, give us financial support for our conference travel. Thank you again, Dr. Matthews, for that. Um, but you also need to pull us into the space industry. We need a space industry that's not afraid of scientific and technological risk. Challenge us, make us go forward. Point forward and say, go for it, students. Now, that's how we get inspired. You ex we explore and then, you, uh, then the students are inspired. Many of us won't end up working for NASA, but the skills that we develop as students are still critical to our nation's economy. So what's required to inspire and train students for the space industry and to generate public enthusiasm? We need scientific literacy. This is for kids and for grown-ups. You know, we've all heard that there's a problem with science in this country, and it's grown-ups, and I count myself one of them now because I have a one-year-old son. It's grown-ups who are responsible for emphasizing scientific literacy. I think one other thing that we don't do, that we should do in STEM, is appeal to patriotism to encourage STEM. After, service, after the, the armed services, I think that maybe there's no higher calling to serve our nation than to either go into teaching, which, our parent, which many of our parents were, or to go into those fields that drive our economy and make our country, give our country the foundation for what makes it great, which allows us to have these freedoms, which puts us to be the number, which makes us the number one country in the world, as we all see it. We also need a national space vision that's long-term and active, sustainable, politically feasible, uh, and congressionally and publicly supported, so, uh, or, and sustainable. Um, and finally, we need scientific, commercial, and technological needs that can only be addressed by low Earth orbit or beyond. Markets up there that encourage us to come up into space. So I want to close with you know, a quote that one of my favorite heroes from all time said. He said, ask not what you can do for your country, ask, what, or ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So I want all students to ask, how can we serve our country better? And I believe it's through STEM, but I also want our leaders to ask us to do something great, ask us to go. Thank you.